I got the two inch screws. I got a, a screwdriver drill bit, just a hair smaller than the threads of this so that I can drill it in at a slight angle. Okay, that's my next step. Now when I put this in, see I, I could I could loosen this and I can slip it all the way in, right? Well, if I tighten it up right there, if I get my two-inch screw out, see how much further the two-inch screw goes in? I don't want that. I'm going to pre-drill that for deeper so I can loosen this and I can pull this out almost all the way, you see, and let it extend a little bit. Now, now I can hold it in there. Let's see it's further out. Oh, it's a little bit too far out, so I can put it back in a little bit. It's about the same right there, see? Okay, so now, now I can tighten that up. And I can get up there and drill that. Get my trusty stool out. I can actually put this on high too. I had it on low. See right there, I know I'm hitting wood because I'm going in at an angle, right? I think that's gonna be, that's gonna be okay. Try not to go too far at an angle because like I said, I don't want that. I don't want that. the edge of the screw when it goes in to stick out too far. And it's not going to by very much. And then once I drive it in there all the way, it may kind of settle it right down into the hinge where it needs to go. Okay, I'll get set up for that. And we'll get that hinge section reattached. Let's do it. Funny thing was, when I came over here, I wasn't even going to make a video of all this. I thought, yeah, everybody's seen this before. Well, you might have seen portions of this before, but I'm actually doing quite a few different things here. And I want you to feel comfortable knowing you've got to go through these steps. Hey, you can't. This middle one back in. See, that's why I got it on low before. To get that in nice and snug. Now, I'm going to put that in at an angle and hit the very edge of the 2x4. These are 2 inch. So I wanted it just a little bit longer since I'm going driving it into the wood now. Not too bad, not too bad. It's sticking out just barely, but you're not going to get it any better than that, sorry. And if it bothers you, that one screw is darker than another, you can take a felt tip pin. You could actually do that on the screw first if you wanted. So you get the whole edge. Those two inch screws seem like they were just a hair different color than that longer screw. And you can do something like that. And this is just a Sharpie. What I do when I put that in my nail bag, I don't, I don't put it in my nail bag like that or else the tip dries out. I put it in my nail bag with this facing down. That way this always is coming down and my, my Sharpie will last many months longer. Okay, that is snug, bad boy. Okay, now I'm ready to put the door back up there. I'll show you that. I'll show you that. Don't worry. Okay, I'm getting ready to 
put that door back up. I'm just going to take one hinge pin and I stick that in my nail bag, sticking straight up. And I'm going to position this back into place over here like this. And I always do the top hinge first, okay? If you've been taught, or you've been told to start at the bottom and then just swivel it up, don't do that. I've been doing this for 30 years and I'm telling you, this way is easier. Lift it up, swivel it into place, look at that, hold it, get your hinge pin up there. And see it went down, it only is down this far, okay? Now I can let go of the door, voila. Let go of the door. It's just up there on its own, okay. Now I can reposition it. Because see, the door's out at an angle. I don't want to try to beat this in with a hammer or something. I could bend that hinge pin because it's not in place all the way. Okay, so I just, I'm going to hold this out like that, lift that. And I can pull this in or out as I'm doing it. The bottom looks like I have to pull it out just a little bit. Get it situated, I can push that right in with my thumb. Okay. Now I can take my hammer and don't hit with your metal. I just use the bottom. And I'm not going to hit it in all the way in case I need to pull it back out. Okay. Uh, this one I can hit at the top. Tap, 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 because if you're if you're rubbing on your wood and it's painted, you can see marks. Oh, that's why Joe does it. Oops. You weren't listening. <laughs> okay, now I can check this door again. That feels, that feels pretty snug. We're going to look at this and see if I think I have to do more to this door. Okay. Well, I, got, I got a nice gap there now. This is, is snug. It's a lot tighter. I can't push it over any further because it's almost hitting up here at the top. And I look at this, remember what our gap was before up here at the top? Look what we got now. We got plenty of gap. And I'm, I'm not too concerned that I'm a hair over that way too far because eventually this hinge is going to sag again a little bit or the hinge pin is going to wear out the inside of the knuckles and that's going to be just a hair sloppy and that's going to cause the door to slightly sag a little bit and it will be perfect. Now see over here, remember? Get, see this gap? It's a lot better. See up here at the top? It's tighter because I've got this, this hinge is kind of sucked in that way and that was helping move the door over. Now had I, had that not been enough, what else could I have done? Well, I could have shaved off the edge of, take the hinge back off, shave off how I explained to you before, or if you have enough gap, which let's say if we had an eighth of an inch all the way, but we don't up here at the top, let's just say we did, I could take this door back off and I could take the three knuckles that are on the door and I could bend them this way, about a sixteenth, 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 with a, with some, uh, uh, a crescent wrench so as not to not to scratch that and just bend the bend the knuckleheads over the knuckleheads uh, just a little bit can you see that if I put the door back on that would push it up over that way a little bit more and that's what I would have done next had I needed to do that but just by sucking up the rest of that hinge remember the, the middle hinge screw was tight before and you might think oh that's good enough you remember these three screws the only screw that was tight was this one and that was keeping the rest of this slightly moving because you were only attaching this whole hinge right there so this side was lifted out this side was lifted out a little bit because I put those screws in there that sucked that up tight and that screw over there kind of pushed that tight and that did it well and then I checked these two screws on the back side you remember those look tight 
Anyways, and that's done it. I can even, if I'm right here, I even push on here. See, I don't have any flex now right there. Nothing at all. And that's what I want. And I couldn't go any further anyways, because this is up tight. And I know what I did has fixed this door. This door sag is fixed. We did it. I'm liking this door now. We've got, we've got enough gap down at the bottom. This door sag was sagged this way. It was almost getting ready to rub up here. It would have rubbed down on the floor. The pocket of the door strike was going to get off a little bit and may not close after it sags too much. The edge of the door was going to start rubbing on the jam. We fix all that. We've taken this by tightening up the hinge. You take this door and you're, you're moving it. So when you move the right hand side, the left hand side goes up. See that? There's no two ways about it. That's just how it works. And we've got her fixed. Well, that's all I have for this time. But I'll be back with more videos. Isn't that crazy? Had you called a door company, a uh, handyman, anyone, they would have charged you at least $95 to $125 coming out and fixing this. Okay, they might have they might have done it a different way. They might have said they couldn't fix it or they had to do something special. You know, that's all you had to do. And if you can't do it, and if you have a friend who can do it, show them my video. Just say, hey, this is hey, take a look at this. 10 minute video from Joe, however long the video is, and just see all the different steps that he did, and they'll be able to do it. Now, I forgot to, to tighten up the, to, to tap the hinge pins in, so I'm just gonna take my hammer and do those, okay? See, I got no marks on the door for that. Now, the top one, I have a hard time doing that because it's up, it's up kind of high. Now, if, if I have my stool, I guess I could do that. Maybe I should. Or I just tap on it right there. Okay? It's exactly how I found it. Or you can get up on the stool and get your hammer up high enough and beat down on it. But you have to have control over it because you don't want to miss and gouge your hammer handle or your, your claw into the wall. Oops. You know? Okay, you just saved yourself at least a hundred bucks. In fact, you saved yourself more because if you were watching the other video, I showed you how to fix these two towel bar racks and you thought you had to replace these two towel bar racks at 25 bucks, 30 bucks each, you would have to go down to the hardware store and bought those for $60 right there and then reinstalled those. So I saved you some money there because I fixed this whole thing with two little nuts that cost about 35 cents each. Had you not watched that video, I suggest you watch that video on how to repair a towel bar rack, towel bar holder, towel bar whatever. Okay, and I've got more things to do. What else is on my list? Well, another thing that's on my list, and I'm gonna do that next, by the way, is this air conditioner. This air conditioner's been on for quite some time, and it's on a four hour timer. It's an intermanic timer. And this is supposed to click off in another hour. Well, it's been stuck in this location for over an hour. This is stuck. The intermatic timer went out. I, I installed this intermatic timer about, oh, I don't know, three years ago. And they don't last forever. And this is in a condo, a rental condo. And people probably cranked on this and turned it, you know, different ways and stuff. And, and now I've got to go ahead and replace that because I want that to turn off automatically. This is designed, it's only a four hour timer, it's designed to throw power from here over to the air conditioner. In four hours it shuts off. If you have it turned on one hour, one hour it shuts off. Then the owner of the vacation condo rental does not have to pay the electricity for all day when the guest went to the beach and they forgot to turn the air conditioner off or they left it on all night. 
or something. So that's my next thing. I'm going to have to find out how to do that in a minute. You want to watch that? Stick around. <laughs>